Welcome to KO TV Boxing Extra, our brand new boxing talk show where we will be talking all things boxing. Uh, just a quick reminder uh, to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and to like our Facebook page as well. And uh, you can download the KO TV Boxing app to your phone or view us on kotvboxing.tv for all the latest shows and interviews and features we got on the platform. Um, as you can see, we are joined by the former cruiserweight champion in the world, Enzo Macronelli. Um, thanks for coming on the show, Enzo. Um, first question is, I guess, uh, how has lockdown been treating you? Yeah, to, to, me, to me, lockdown hasn't been too bad. I got a, I got an amateur club, so I ended up ripping the floor and out, put a new floor in down, put a new bags in, um, done a bit of training myself. Uh, Getting my garage out with a couple of bags, been back running again. So it, it hasn't been too bad for me. I, I missed the boys up the gym, but it hasn't been too bad. So in regard to the amateur boxing, I mean, how difficult has it been? I mean, it is just amateur boxing on, on stop at the moment. Well, it is. We've recently, I think I've been open now for two weeks um, under a lot of restrictions. Um, uh, I'm only allowed 10 people in at a time. I'm only allowed uh, an hour sessions. Uh, I'm allowed three sessions per night. They've got to be two metres apart. Um, everything's got to be wiped down after each use. Everything, everything's got to be just. Everything's got to be clean. It's got to be tidy. Um, but for me, unfortunately, I, I got 50 boys in the gym uh, with four sessions. Uh, I'm only allowed 40 in. So you know, people have been missing out, and you know, some some of these boys who over lockdown, I stayed in contact with them all. You know, it's been. Um, it's quite. It's been quite hard for them mentally. Yeah, and I suppose as well, amateur boxing gyms rely on putting on shows to earn extra money to keep themselves going. I guess that's not a possibility now either. No, it's not because it's probably just putting the show on. There's going to be no crowd there, so they're not going to make no money. Um, so it's it, it, like you said, it's all, it's all on a stop start at the moment. We're just waiting to hear things. Um, not not every gym has been allowed to open. Like I said, there's been so many restrictions. Um, floor layouts of the gym, uh, how many people that can be in the gym. And, you know, just not everyone's open at the moment. So it's a um, bit, bit of on, on hold at the moment. Yeah, and I guess that's similar to the small hall boxing and the pros as well because they rely on ticket sales predominantly. They haven't got big uh, TV deals to bring money in. So I guess they are in a similar scenario. Yeah, they are. And you look at the likes of uh, Steffi Bowl, Carl Greaves, Mo Pryor, uh, Steve Goodwin, Mickey Herliot. They, they haven't got no TV. They haven't got no, uh, no massive sponsors. So they rely um, on putting shows on with the crowd. They make them generate their money for themselves and for their fighters through the crowd. Uh, and if you think of these managers, they got so many boys on the box all wanting a fight and I don't think people realise that if a fighter doesn't fight he doesn't get paid he doesn't get a weekly wage um, he, he's got to fight to earn money Yeah and I think a lot, a lot of people don't realise as well um, a lot of these small hall shows even when they can sell tickets they still don't make a lot of money if any money at all quite often they're losing money Yeah it's a, it's a lot of them and you know that's where uh, the risks they want to take and to, to build their promotion, to build their followers, to build their fighters, hopefully get their fighters a, uh, a contract with, uh, with a big promoter, like Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn. Uh, even Mickey McKenzie, he's got, he's got Channel 5 boxing. Um, so, you know, they, they genuinely, they rely on, they rely on uh, viewers, the, the, the public being in that, in that arena that night. Uh, the, the boy's got to sell a certain amount of tickets to actually get paid. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just very hard at the moment. It's hard, it's hard for a lot of people. And but you know, combat sports, or MMA, and boxing in general, where the lower level rely on ticket sales, we rely on the viewing public. Um, it, it's really bad. Yeah, you, you mentioned Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn there, and uh, Mick Hennessy. They of course have been putting shows on. Mm -hmm. In the UK, I know Bob Aaron's been doing it in America as well. I mean, what's your thoughts on the uh, the, the Eddie Hearn fight camp? Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's been great, and um, you know, I, I've I've seen on social media people slagging it off and slagging Frank Warren off, and I was just happy uh, boxing was on, and you know, we've seen some good fights. We've seen we've seen some very good fights, and you know, we had a four week period where they were fighting on every week. Sometimes it was two nights of fighting. Um, 
and it, it, it's been it's been great. And you know, pe- people who mourn aren't real boxing fans. I, I was happy watching anything. You know, the amount of the amount of old YouTube videos I've been watching over the lockdown just to get my get my boxing fix was uh, you know unbelievable. Yeah, of course, the the probably the highlight or the, the most memorable um, event from the fight camps and all the lockdown boxing across the world probably was of course. Um, Dillian White getting knocked out by mm. Povetkin. Um, I mean, we we were shocked as the rest of us when that happened. Um, I, I I was shocked because he was boxing so well. But I remember telling the boys in the in the day. Uh, I know a couple of boys went to put a lot of bit of couple of bets on and things like that. And I I just said don't write Povetkin off. I thought Dillian was going to win. Um, but and I think Dillian knew the danger Povetkin posed. That's why he boxed so well. That's why he got himself in so, such good condition. But I did say he was a banana skin and. Um, even, for, even from the first round you know Povetkin he was throwing that jab even though Dylan White was boxing well keeping out of range he was Povetkin was popping that jab he was slipping down he was throwing that left up to the body he was sort of giving, giving Dylan White the instincts of him whipping a body shot in in that fourth round after being dropped twice he went to the same same position as he'd done in the first couple of rounds but instead of throwing a body shot he brought it straight up the middle and if we watch and I think he just stands square on a split second and, you know, not many was going to take that shot. So, you know, all credit to Povetkin, you know, 40 years of age or 41 now and um, lovely shot. But, you know, he's been there, he's done it, he's experienced uh, and he carried all that experience into the ring with him. Yes, yeah, so it's not very regular, or very often you see um, a lead left uppercut the way uh, Povetkin throwed it through it. Yeah, it, it was a lead left up, but it was a distraction first. Uh, and what what got in the what got in the finishing punch was the distractions, the distractions of the two or three rounds doing the same sort of body movement, same sort of shit, but throwing the shot to the body. So he disguised it. He threw that jab. He slept to the side. Dillian was expecting that body shot. Bang! Comes straight up from the middle of that lead left shot, which is, which is a dangerous shot. Yeah, I mean, it was a massive gamble, I suppose, for Dillian White to even take this. Bearing in mind he was the number one contender for the, the WBC title, currently held by uh, Tyson Fury. I mean, where does Dillian White go now? Does he, if you were advising Dillian, if he asked for you for advice, would you advise him to take a, perhaps a, a warm-up fight first or would he go straight in for the rematch? No, the rematch. You know, he could get them demons out of the way. He was, uh, he was uh, don't get me wrong, Dillian White was boxing well, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't as one-sided as people were making out. Uh, you know, I thought Pavekin boxed well. Uh, he was landing a lot of body shots. Uh, Dillian, Dillian was winning the fight. He was in charge. Uh, the two knockdowns, and you know, he didn't rush in, and he was right not to rush in because he, he he knows the danger Pavekin's Pavekin possesses. Um, but it was just that split second. Uh, he stood square on. He fell for the trap that Pavekin threw, and. You've got to remember this. This is an Olympic gold medalist, a former world champion. You know, he ducked no one. He'd been in with everyone, and you know it, that was the thing. So for for Dillian White, uh, which I've seen him back in the gym, he's gone back to Portugal. Like he's been back in the gym training already. I think it's the best thing for him, and um, you know he needs to. He does need to recover a little bit. Let his uh, let his brain recover a little bit. That that was a nasty shot. Um, you know, I, I you're in December, which is great. Um, I wouldn't like it any any sooner. Yeah, um, but of course, this this win for Povetkin totally changes the, the heavyweight division. Um, it opens up the possibility of Fury and Joshua, which is, I guess is the fight that most fans want to see. Um, what's your thoughts on that, and how do you think see things progressing over the next six to twelve months with the heavyweights? What uh, for the heavyweights or Fury and Joshua in particular? Yeah, I mean, but, but both both really. I mean, will that fight happen? Do you think? Oh, it, it's so hard, I, you know. You've got you've got people on social media: Tyson Fury, Dak and Joshua, Anthony Joshua, Dak and Tyson Fury. They're not Dak and anyone. They, you know, they want the fight. I think the two of them they want to get in. They want to show who the best is. Tyson Fury believes he's the best. Anthony Joshua believes he's the best. But then you've got two separate promoters, two separate TV companies. So the the big question is, who's gonna have the TV rights? Will BT want to give Sky Sports millions and millions of pounds? Would Sky Sports want to give BT millions and millions of pounds? There was a, there's a lot of lot of things that need to be worked out. Um, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn got to go come together, which I I noticed they uh they've sort of um, been a bit amicable amicable of late. Um, 
but a TV company's got to come together as well. And I, I don't think people realise that. It's not as simple as I want to fight him, he wants to fight me, let's get it done. So fingers crossed um, they can push, push for it. Um, obviously, Joshua got to fight Pulev, which is a dangerous fight. Um, Fury's got to fight Wilder, which I still think is a dangerous fight. Uh, when they get through that, ideally, in an ideal world, we see that big blockbuster in the summer, which would be probably the biggest fight Britain's ever seen. Yeah, another big heavyweight fight involving two British fighters, Dubois and uh, Joyce. I mean, it was meant to happen, uh, I think, last May. Obviously, it didn't take place because of the, the COVID. Um, how, how do you see that fight uh, going, if it does take place, say, in December, November time? Well, I, I, first of all, I think it's been sanctioned for October. Um, all right, brilliant. But now I view it, it's been pushed back to November because I think it's been a bit more um, bit more reference of fans being allowed in. I think that sort of fight would be great for the fans. Um, and it, it's, it's a tricky one because, for me, uh, Joe Joyce is probably the best fighter on paper, amateur or pro, that Dubois has boxed. Um, is Dubois the best fighter on paper that Joyce has boxed? I don't think so. When you look at Texas, Alexander Rusek, yes, he lost. Tony Oka, he lost. He should have won. Um, I think a lot of people are writing Joe Joyce off for this fight. Um, I think Danny Dubois locks the business. I think he got fast hands. He has good movements. But for me, I can only go on facts of what I've seen. And what I've seen is Dubois locking a million dollars. Uh, against the majority. I think he struggled a bit with Kevin Johnson where he showed his inexperience of not knowing how to open someone up like Johnson. There's someone like Kevin Johnson, punch power is not going to do it alone. Uh, you need to open someone up. But do I like him? Yes. Do I think he can go a long way? Yes. But so far, I haven't seen him up against anyone. You know, we talk of the Gorman fight and the Gorman fight was a good measure stick. But again, how good is Gorman? Mm. Uh, he blocked brilliant that night but you've got to remember how good is Gorman uh, in Joe Joyce you've got someone who is very open uh, he comes forward very open so obviously could play in the Dubois hands but on the other side of things if Dubois can't get him out there in two or three rounds have we seen the gas tank that Dubois has because we know Joe Joyce will go for 12 rounds and if if he can get through four or five rounds and making Dubois work, how's it going to play out? I think it's a very interesting fight. And, you know, I think I'd edge towards Joyce just for just for the facts of what I've seen and what I know. But Dubois, Dubois does look the part. And I think this fight will tell us a lot more about how far Daniel Dubois is going to go. Um, one thing lockdown has given us, I suppose, is it's, it's raised uh, female boxing to the forefront. Massively. Um, Maybe, I don't know, I was thinking about this earlier. It might just be the fact that, rightly or wrongly, female boxers don't get paid as much. Um, so, so they are happy to take less money. Mm. So their fight's perhaps easier to put together. But um, two cracking fights we had. Obviously, Katie Taylor against the, the Belgian um, uh, person. Mm. And, of course, um, Harper and Natasha Jonas. Two excellent fights. You've got, you've got to put Ball and Courtney in as well. They, yeah, of course, they, yeah, yeah. That was a good fight. Not not on the level of the other two, um, but uh, they were. It was a good fight, and I think with women boxing not being paid the same as the men, I don't think the depth is there in women's boxing yet. Um, you know, I I like to see women's boxing over three rounds, uh, over three minute rounds. Um, but again, you know, they they won't be paid the same as the men, and uh, if if the viewing figures are there, which those three fights over lockdown showed. Um, that is a, is a massive buzz about women's boxing, especially when we get two evenly matched uh, females fighting together. You know, if, I think it, the, the money will be there. The more, the more depth in women's boxing becomes, the, the, greater, the greater opponents that these fighters can fight. Because uh, so far, it's always, been, it's always been Katie Taylor. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people just know Katie Taylor. They don't know about um, Cecilia Brackhouse. Um, uh, Who's the, other, who's the other girl? It's, it's, it's a lot of fighters out there. You've got Amanda Serrano. Um, it's, it's, some, it's some good fighters. And now they're getting a bit more even. Now they're getting a bit more even fights. The interest is there. Just Cur on the... 
sorry, Clarissa Shields is the one I was thinking yeah, of. Clarissa Shields, yeah, of course, yeah. Who's uh, self-proclaimed the, the goat of women's <laughs> boxing, but you know, very outspoken she, lady. She is good. And um, just on the Taylor Pursun fight, um, it was interesting. The scoring it was it was a bit controversial, but I, I didn't think it was personally. But it was it was interesting. Um, you had a, a group of people thinking that Taylor won because she was she was the better boxer, more skillful, threw better shots, and then you had another group of people went for the Belgian Pursun just because she was more. Um, more busy, if you like, throwing more shots. I mean, what's your thoughts on boxing scoring in general? Well, it's subjective, and you know, it's, it's a lot of people who thought, like you said, Taylor won. A lot, of, a lot of people thought Pusun won, and it all boils down to what you like. Uh, for me, I thought Pusun edged it. I said on the night, um, I thought, I thought Taylor was the class of the two of the first four rounds. She, you know, she looked, she looked brilliant. She was, she was making a mess. But then Pusun started coming back, and you know, for, for me. Pursu missed a lot of shots. She also landed a lot of shots, and people forget that. You know, when she was landing them straight jabs, that one, two, Katie Taylor's head was snapping back. You could see, see if she was being affected by the shots. Um, Katie Taylor was hitting Pursu bang and a button with some lovely crisp shots, um, and it, it was no effect whatsoever. You know, she, she was like the Terminator that night. She just kept coming forward. Well, would I argue about the scoring? No. I thought it was a really close fight. I thought it could have gone either way. Um, you know, so. I was reading. I was reading scores on social media about Katie Taylor winning every round, and you know the, the most of them were coming from all from Ireland. Uh, but it, it was like Pursun winning every round. No, not, nothing like that happened. It, it was a close, close fight. Uh, a lot of times, Katie Katie Taylor locked the business. She was making slipping shots, countering with shots. But then it, over a two minute round, she was only doing it for about thirty seconds in some of the rounds. And you know, I don't see how I give someone a round for winning. 30 seconds of a two-minute round. But like I said, Key, was it was it a robbery? No, not at all. You know, I, I wouldn't have argued with the... I, I thought Pursun edged it, but I argued with the Katie Taylor win. No, not at all. And of course, if female boxing is fought over three-minute rounds, that could change the styles of some female boxers because it would be difficult to move the way Katie Taylor does for three minutes over a ten-round fight. Well, you, you see, you've seen her tiring uh, in the persona, and rightfully so. You know, persona just kept on, just kept pushing. Her, you know, it's hard, it's hard hitting someone and having no effect whatsoever, and they just walk in through you. And uh, over a three-minute round, that could that could have got a bit a uh, bit more dangerous for Katie Taylor. You know, because persona looked like she could have gone all night. Uh, she forced the fight. She dictated where the fight took place. And Katie Taylor, at times, is sublime with this skill. But like you said, could she keep that up for three minute rounds, over ten rounds, or twelve rounds? Another Irish boxer, or British Irish boxer in action, uh, Carl Frampton. Um, he's talking now about stepping up or fighting for a third world title and a third weight against um, Jamil Herring. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Enzo? Uh, it's a big step up for Carl due to his lack of height as much as anything else. I think it's a massive step up in uh, you know the, the quality, step of quality. No chance. I think. I think. Um, Carl Frampton is one of the most talented boys I've seen. It, you know, I, I love watching Carl Frampton, and he boxed the other week. And you know, it was a short notice fight, but he, he looked the part. He needed that sort of um, fight to come in, test his hands out. He's having hand problems. Um, and Jamil Herring is massive compared to Carl Frampton. Uh, but then Carl Frampton has got a lot of skill, uh, and he, he knows he would know how to. Um, sort of negate what Jamil Herring can do. He'd take that jab off him, but with his movement, his body shots. Um, I've noticed he, he's always thrown body shots, but I've noticed he's thrown a lot more lately. So I don't know whether that's uh, in his head or, you know, they've been thinking about Herring for a while uh, and planning those body shots to sort of break him down. It's a massive step up. And, you know, I think he believes he can do it. And, you know, I, I wouldn't write him off. I mean, Carl's last fight against uh, Darren Trainer, I think he was, um, it was obviously in the, the BT studios with no crowd. And Carl is a guy who's, he, always, he has a massive army of fans wherever mm. he boxes, whether in this country or Ireland or America. Do you think the lack of crowd maybe affected Carl's performance? Um, no, not really. I think he's, he's a professional. He went, up, he went up on his job. He was, he was never in any sort of trouble. Um, I think he was just trying a few things out. You know, it was a short notice fight. Um, Jamie, Jamie Moore in his corner. Uh, you know, I think he was just trying a few things out. And he did look good. He won his one as ruthless as he normally is, but he did look good. He worked, he worked different ways. He worked different angles, uh, and he, he cut trainer down. And you know, a trainer couldn't didn't have nothing left towards the end. 
Yeah. Uh, another fight that people have talked about, or a fighter, Canelo Alvarez, uh, you know, probably the biggest money-making fighter in the world. Um, they, they still haven't found an opponent for him. I mean, Smith's been mentioned, Billy Joe Saunders. Um, who, who should he fight, Enzo? Who do you think he should fight? Smith, Saunders, Benavidez. Uh, get this talk out of Yildirim, out, out of their minds. Uh, you know, I couldn't even believe he was mentioned. You know, as a as a disgrace. Um, I think with with Smith, it's more um, a straight on fight. You know, you know who you're getting. I think Saunders is going to be the more awkward fight, uh, and Benavidez as well. You know, I, I don't think um, before Benavidez got stripped of his title, I didn't see Canelo calling for Benavidez. Um, so it's it's an interesting fight. Any any of them three, Kayla Plant as well. You know, I think you know put him in the mix, and you know I think he would give it a give, give it a hell of a shot. But you know, any of them four would be much more acceptable to me rather than uh, a, a Yale Dream who Eubank Junior destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's interesting. I noticed the zone apparently. Uh, Canelo's um, the the streaming uh, network he, he boxes on. They apparently are been happy with his. They're not happy with Smith or Saunders as a as opponents for him, apparently. I, I don't, don't see why they they wouldn't be. Um, you know, I think they they too. If you look at uh, if you look at the landscape of the super middleweight division, I think them them two have probably got just as good a chance as anyone um, to get at Canelo uh, in different ways. Obviously, uh, Smith being the bigger man, um, uh, you know, he might be able to take. Canelo shots, push him, push him back, and see what Canelo is like under pressure. He got good body shots of his own. Um, Billy Joe Saunders is just going to make such an awkward night for Canelo. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you got you got to favour Canelo against pretty much anyone. I think I think the man <laughs> the man is mustard. I think he's brilliant, but I think Billy Joe Saunders and Callum Smith uh, are probably got just as good a chance of beating him as anyone. So I, I don't see. Um, why the zone wouldn't fancy them. So I, I don't know who they're thinking of. I don't know whether they wanted to go up to like Hebrew again, which is against a, a Berbatiev, uh, which I think is a, a bad idea for him. Um, so I, I don't know. So don't, the, zone, the zone, and I just hope this Yildirim fight doesn't uh, come off. <laughs> yeah, I think they've, they've said that that's not going to happen. I don't know whether it's, it's, it's one of the, the third Golovkin fight, perhaps. Well, I think that would be him, but I think Golovkin would want another one first. Um, uh, I, I heard talks about him going to Japan as well, uh, the fight in, in Japan. Um, so you, know, you, don't, you don't know, you don't know with, with the, the networking he would have of bringing a new fan base in from over Japan. But ultimately, for me, Benavidez, Smith, or Saunders, I'd be happy with. Um, a fight that apparently has been made for October the seventeenth: um, Lomachenko against Lopez. Uh, a fight. No, that's, that's a brilliant fight. Brilliant. That's a, that's a brilliant fight, and um, you can't look past Lomachenko. Uh, you know, I think, I think he's he's the business. He's, um, he's he's a special special talent. But I I like what I seen from Teofimo Lopez. You know, fast hands, tremendous power, um, and I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be. Um, what I like about Teofimo Lopez, he actually believes he's going to win. He actually believes he's going to win this fight. So you know that makes him a dangerous man. Um, would I bet against Lomachenko? No. But I think it's a, it's a lot more interesting than people think. At the, at the moment, our lightweight division is buzzing. Yeah, and then, I mean, credit to both boxers as well, because apparently they both had to take uh, a bit of a pay cut to, to make this fight happen, because obviously there's, there's no crowds going to be there. But, I mean, our boxers in the future, I mean, the big names, are they going to have to accept they're going to be fighting for less money now during this lockdown? Period? Well, if, it, if, it, if it's not pay-per-view, yes. And I think... Uh, Lomachenko and Lopez isn't pay per view, but I've been reading. I've been reading a lot of things, and I've heard it was Lomachenko that actually took the pay cut, yeah, uh, to, make, to make the fight, which which tells you all you need to know about the man. You know, he's in this. He's in the money's great, yes, but he's in this game for the legacy rather rather than the money. So, um, yeah, and if 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 boxing is not is on pay per view and it's just on like a uh, normal TV like BT or Sky, uh, yes, he will have to take a pay, pay cut. Whether they want to or not, um, I think that's the way it'll have to go. Yeah. Um, and another fight, well, if, if you can call it a fight, and I suppose you, you are one of the best people to ask about this, um, Roy Jones, a former opponent of yours, fighting an exhibition against Mike Tyson. Um, what's your thoughts? I mean, I, I'm not even sure how I feel about this. Right. 
I've been asked this a few times, Kieran, and um, am I am I happy about them two fighting? No, right. But am I happy about them two wanting to fight each other the same age? Yes, you know, I'd rather them fight each other uh, than fight someone twenty five, thirty, uh, up and coming. Um, the, the, pro- the problem is people people don't realize when a fighter finishes boxing, uh, even though Tyson's been finished off for fifteen years. Um, He's probably never left his head about wanting to fight again. Uh, you know, it's it's a uh, when you've done something for twenty years, done something for twenty five years, and it's take uh, it, it have been taken off you. Can't do it no more. Um, it eats at you, uh, and it, you know, for for mental well being, you know, probably both of them need this fight. And like I said, I got no problem them fighting each other as long as they pass all medicals, uh, and I mean full medicals as if as if they were fighting pro. Um, Will it be an exhibition? No. I don't believe for one minute it's going to be a, a tippy tap exhibition. I think whoever lands first, uh, the other one's going to try and get the other one back. Uh, and I, th- I think it'll be I think it'll be a quite decent watch for, for what it is. Yeah, I think even people like myself, perhaps who have been a little bit critical of it, and there's other people who've been a lot more critical than me, they'll probably still all be watching. They'll still all be tuning in yeah, to get in the middle of the night to watch it. But like I like I said, mate, you know, do do I do I begrudge him wanting to, wanting to clear stuff in the basement and uh, getting their mind right? And no, I don't. I, I, I'd be gutted if one of them fought some youngster, some up and coming, um, you know, who, who look at Tyson on the bags and the pads. And he looks phenomenal. He looks phenomenal. But in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, um, what's it going to be like I'm doing that for a couple of rounds? Um, like I said, as long as they pass the medicals, and I mean full medicals, brain scans, eye tests, uh, as if as if they were fighting pro, I am got a problem as long as they're fighting each other. That's one thing as well I've noticed uh, happening when Tyson puts these thirty second clips up. People are some people are automatically saying fans are saying right, Mike Tyson he can he can he can knock out Anthony Joshua now or he can beat so and so now based on those thirty seconds. Right, you, you give you give Tyson a fight there, any fight in the world at this moment in time over one round, he's got a chance. Any, any more than that. Uh, no, he hasn't. And you know, I'm I'm one of Tyson's biggest fans. I, I love Tyson. His movement, his um, his movement, his shots, his angles, the, the the way he puts his punches together. I'm a, a massive fan. Um, but we've got to remember what he was like 15 years ago. Um, even though even though his head was in a shed 15 years ago, I think it was Kevin McBride his last fight. Yeah. Um, you know, his head wasn't in the right place. He was doing it for the wrong reasons. He's doing it for the right reasons now. But it's 15 years ago. You know, he's 53. I think he's 53 now. Um, and he would be a nightmare for anyone over a round. I can, I can imagine it. You know, he yet he someone who will never lose the power. But more, more than a round, no. He hasn't got a chance. Both at their prime. Who, who would have won Enzo? Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson, do you think? Now, th- this is a strange one. It's... Uh, it's like they both could beat each other, and I know what the Ali fans who, who live on uh, live on. He can do this, you know, and I they think Tyson could he break Tyson's heart and stuff like that. But then, you know, you, you read you read left, different boys read different things about ah, oh, he never catch, he never catch Ali with that shot. But yet, Fraser caught Ali with that shot. Tyson's a, a bigger, stronger version than uh, Fraser. Henry Cooper uh, caught Ali with that shot. Um, so I'm sure Tyson could as well, but ultimately Ali could outbox uh, outbox Tyson. Uh, and wear him down. I, th- I don't think he would break his heart. Um, I think he could wear him down and you know win win on points. So you know I I stay in offence at him because I I like living in 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 the past. I, I seen an interview with Muhammad Ali uh, not so long ago, and he was saying that um, who would be your hardest opponent ever? This this was before. Tyson and they thought Joe Lewis, prime Joe Lewis. This has got to be Joe Lewis. And he said, No. He said, Joe Lewis would try to box me. He said, I could beat that. He said, The, the hardest one to beat would be the man who doesn't quit, who do not know where he's coming from, who hits very hard. And he said, Rocky Marciano would be his hardest fight. Mm. So it's, 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 I, I'm like, when I, you know, I see all these polls who would win, and then someone says Tyson, they're slagging him off, or Tyson, someone says Ali, and they're slagging him off. Ultimately, in two separate generations, it would have been a fantastic fight, those two styles. Um, problem with Tyson was 
his prime was so short lived. Um, and you know, he he did he did go drink, he did do drugs, uh, he sort of didn't didn't dedicate himself in the sport. But that's his fault. Um, you know, his preparation is key. He didn't prepare right. He lost to Douglas, and he just went on a downward spiral from there. Um, so something that affected you during your career, Enzo. Um, you were a little bit too small for cruiserweight division, especially when they moved the weight up. They moved up a few pounds, and you were probably a little bit too big for light heavyweight. Mm. Um, for, for a long time, there's always been rumours that they're going to create a new weight division. Recently, the WBC have, have um, said they were considering making a new weight division between 200 pounds and 225. Which, uh, I mean, what's your thoughts? But I, I think that's ridiculous. I think the, 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 the gap between light heavyweight and cruiserweight needs to be addressed yeah. before before that. Um, you know, you look at amateur boxing, 91 kilos is, is cruiserweight, but it's heavyweight. 91 plus is super heavyweight. He, super heavyweight, be with you one. Um, I understand where they're coming from, but I think the gap between 13.8 uh, and 14.4, so it's 175 and 200 pounds, is it's a, it's a massive, massive jump. When it, when Cruiserweight was 13.8, uh, it suited me a lot better. Um, I still had to cut, I didn't have to cut much. I got a pound in weight, I have to cut the day before, and I, that was it for me. Uh, but I was strong, I was healthy. Uh, most of the time when I fought as a Cruiserweight, I was coming in about 13.10, 13.11. A couple of times I went up, which didn't suit me, but you know these boys were boiling down from 15 stone down to 14 stone four, so... Theoretically, on fight night, I was I was giving away stone and stone off. But I won a world title, so I couldn't complain. Um, I won a British, I won a European, dropped down, won a Commonwealth, nearly won a world title as a light heavyweight. Uh, but I I was stuck in between. Um, and you look you look at you look at some of the crews out there now. Is a lot of them the same? Um, you know, Nate, Nathan Thorley. Um, you know, he boxed recently against Chris Bell and Smith, and the size difference was ridiculous. Uh, you know, Chris Bell and Smith's a strong, strong cruiserweight, um, and Nathan Thorley, I think, is caught in between. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fighters out there, so I would like that address more than more than the, the super heavyweight division. I mean, if the WBC or any other organisation, the British Boxing Board of Control, asked you your advice, I mean, if there was going to be a weight division between like heavy and a uh, cruise weight. What would the ideally be the weight limit for that? Thirteen eight, the way it was. Um, the thirteen eight, the way it was, and you know, so it's, it's a stone heavier than like heavy weight, uh, and then it's. Um, I think it's ten pound under under cruise weight. So you know, I think that would be ideal. Um, I think it would be thirteen seven, but you know, I think that would be a much better jump of a stone rather than pretty much two stone. Um, which is what it what it nearly is. Yeah, um, a fellow Welshman who's having a, a comeback fight is going to eliminate a lined up Lee Selby. Um, do you think Lee Selby can win a world title in uh, at lightweight? I'd like to say, but when you look at uh, you look at the fighters out there, the champions, Davis, Lopez, um, Hany, uh, and he's he's got a tough one next, and you know he's he's. Camboza, he's um, he's un- not many people know of him. Um, he's a strong fighter. He got fast hands. He looks like he can crack a bit. Um, I know he's been out training with Pacquiao, and I know he impressed so well. They had him back again. Um, so it's a tough fight, and unfortunately for Lee, he's in a, he's in a, a division now. Who, who, who look at the likes of the Campbells, Hany, uh, Ryan Garcia, and then you've got Javante Davis, Tiafimo Lopez, um, Lomachenko. You know, it's a, it's a hard, hard group. I'd like to, I'd like to think he can, but it's a, it's a massive ask. Yeah, and another British fighter who's got a, a tough fight. I don't, I don't think they've actually officially announced the date yet. Um, Luke Campbell, potentially yeah, fighting. Yeah, Garcia. Garcia. Well, it's, it goes back to what I, what I've said before. It's all about facts. Uh, and Luke Campbell, uh, on, on paper, would be too experienced, too quick, too long arms for Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia got tremendous hand speed, uh, really fast. Do we know enough about him? Have we have we beat enough? Uh, have we beat enough people um, to show that he can compete with Luke Campbell? Okay, Luke Campbell lost his big fights. Um, Lomachenko and Lanares, uh, nothing nothing to be ashamed of in them two. Put up a tremendous performance against Lomachenko. Um, so for me, I got to go for Luke Campbell. 
um, due to the fact I don't really know how good Ryan Garcia is. He he looks good, and you know, got all these people on there. He's gonna smash Campbell, and he he might he might be this special, but no one knows. He's he's got really fast hands. He's got good head movement. Looks like he's starting to generate a lot more power uh, in his shots. Uh, but if he was going on, a, if he was a better man, who's going on paper and going on facts, you'd have to edge towards Luke Campbell. Um, we spent the last half hour, three quarters hour, talking about boxing, Enzo. Um, and anyone who follows you on social media will have noticed you were doing lots of training, as you mentioned. Are we going to see you back in a boxing ring at any point? Hopefully, hopefully, mate. Hopefully, and uh, you know, I've been I've been suffering from a herniated disc for the last year, um, so. You know, I haven't been doing too much, but now I'm, I, I'm sort of fully recovered. Um, I, I found a great physio on Anthony Carter. Uh, Anthony Carter, uh, he's got me to where I was. Um, I'm back running again. I'm back sparring again. Think, things aren't great yet, uh, but they're coming together. And I know there's a, a new arena in Swansea next summer, uh, opening next summer, and for me to say goodbye, um, I'd like to maybe have a couple before then. Maybe have something a bit bigger uh, to open out a new new arena, and you know, if we think of who can open the new Swansea Arena, it's going to be Swansea's only ever world champion. <laughs> um, so you know, it's the dream is there, but I I got so much on, and you know, I've got a lot in the basement as well that you want to get out. But I've got so much on training the youngsters, um, doing a bit of property, and you know, my, my time's busy. So a lot of a lot of fighters. Uh, they want to fight again for the wrong reasons. I want to fight again, so I still got something left. Um, Would it be fair then, to say that you you're a guy who actually some guys fight for money, but you actually love boxing? Mate, if I if I'm honest, right, I could have made I could have made triple triple of what I made. I didn't make I made good. I didn't make I didn't make as much as people think I made. Uh, but I could have tripled it. I could have quadrupled it. I never I never tried to uh, up my money. I never tried to negotiate it was like yes you fight me for this I could have said no and I could have added a 50 grand onto it or whatever and it would be cut down to 20 but no nothing so it was it was always about um, it was always about the love of boxing for me uh, I love the sport um, you know I, I'm wrapped up in the amateur game as well and you know they they sort of occupy my time if I never boxed again I'd have them to fall back on and guide them to where they want to be and uh but the dream is there, Swansea, Swansea Arena, next summer. Um, I spoke to a couple of people. They know what I want. They know who I'm after, if they can get it. Um, so we'll see. And just uh, before we wrap things up, Enzo, it would be um, amiss of me not to mention uh, Swansea's Jay Harris for an amazing performance on out in, uh, uh, in the USA, fighting for the world title. Ah, this looking 12-year-old you've ever seen. <laughs> ah, this 12-year-old you've ever seen. No, oh, fantastic performance. You know, there's a lot of people. A lot of people uh, thought that Martinez was going to walk through him and uh, put a hell of an effort in, especially after going down so early. Um, put a hell of an effort in, and uh, what a tremendous performance! And uh, hopefully, um, he can kick on from there, which I'm sure he will. Cause he gained a lot of fans, um, and you know, I, I wish him all the best. And you know, I'm definitely going to be following his uh, his career. And he went down as well. I think it was it was an 11th round, and it was amazing. Really, you could see he's in real pain for him to get up and carry on going. He showed a massive uh, strength of character. That that's something you can't instill in someone. You know, you've got to have that. You've got to have that one, that desire to go through uh, to go through the <laughs> the pain barrier, which he did that night. I thought I thought it was an actually terrific performance by Jake. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for your time uh, today, Enzo. Um, I'm sure all the viewers on KOTV have enjoyed this chat. Um, just to remind people, you can follow KOTV on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and you can like our Facebook page. Uh, download the app to your phone and go to kotvboxing.tv to view all our channels and fight footage. Thank you very much. Cheers, Keith.